Step 1. Installation. The installation is rather simple and would take less than 2 minutes. I have already set this up on my media server, but just to demonstrate the installation process, I'm going to redo this on my virtual box. So I've created a virtual box for FreeBSD. I'm going to go ahead and click on start. Now I have mounted my ISO image for FreeNAS directly here right now. But in your case, you can use the link provided in the description where you can download the FreeNAS ISO for USB and then copy that image directly to the USB. So I'm going to select the bootable image. Now I'm going to select the free NAS installer, which will take a couple of seconds to bring up the main installation page. This is where I would select the option one, install upgrade. Now this screen, we will be selecting where free NAS needs to be installed. In my original case or where my media server is set up, I'm using a USB to install the free NAS OS. I'm doing this specifically for the reason that FreeNAS OS requires 8 GB of storage space for this setup. And if you would like to be using a hard drive for installing the OS, the remaining space would actually be not usable. Therefore, I would prefer a USB drive. In my case, I've used a 16 GB pen drive. So I'm gonna select by hitting a spacebar and then an end. Now it's going to give me a warning that everything on this particular selected drive where I'm going to install the OS is going to be wiped off. So I hit yes. It's going to ask me to put a root password in here. So I'm going to put a root password. That is it guys. The installation is done. Once the installation is completed, a reboot would be prompted. Go ahead and reboot the FreeNAS box. Once the machine is rebooted, remember to remove the USB that we used to boot from and not the one that FreeNAS is installed on. And once that's done, you would be presented with a non-GUI interface, but all you need on that page is an IP address. Step 2. Configuring and setting up FreeNAS. Now to access the FreeNAS GUI, open the web browser, enter the IP address that we were provided earlier on the FreeNAS box. I'm using the one, I've entered the uh, IP address on the Chrome browser, as you can see on the screen. And at the very first login, you'll be prompted to enter your root password. And this will be presenting you the system information screen. Let's add a ZFS storage now. By clicking on storage, volume manager, and enter the volume as, in my case, Demoplex. You can name whatever you want. I've just put a sample drive of 11 gigabytes. It depends on what's your uh, storage drive. Leave this section untouched unless you're really good with RAID setup. This is selected automatically as a best setup for you. In case you're interested to learn more about the RAID setup, I can leave a link below in the description. Now that I have selected the drive, I'm gonna hit on add volume and before you click on this button be aware that anything that is on this drive will be completely wiped off so now that we have the volume created we're going to create a data set data set is created inside the volume and is similar to like a folder to create it click on the volume that we've created and then click on create data set choose a data set name i'm going to select share type as windows as most of my clients are Windows, dataset successfully created. Now we need to set permissions on that dataset. So highlight the dataset, click on define permissions. Here I'm defining permissions for the root user. Make sure you set permission recursively so that all the subfolders carry on the same permission. Hit change. Permissions have been successfully applied. We will need to create a share. In order to create a share, we select the dataset and click on sharing and then we create Windows CF shares and we click on add CF shares then you would select the path the data set Democlex movies that we had created before make sure that allow guest access is selected 
or else your Plex will not have permission accessing this folder. Click OK, click Yes, and then you can see over here the Sips share is enabled. Now we need to mount the share. In order to do that, we just go to Tools, Map Network Drive, select a drive letter. In this case, I've selected a Z drive. Put in the IP address of the FreeNAS server, followed by the shared folder that you've created in SIFS. Right? Click on Connect using different credentials and you can supply your user details or account details that you had created and as you can see the drive is mapped and I have some movies copied over right just for a demo again this is on my uh, virtual box so I'm not putting a lot I already have my free NAS server set up so if you want to check out my entire Plex video you could check the part one I'm gonna leave some annotations and um, a link in the description box so now this is being mapped we need to install the plugin for uh, Plex server onto your FreeNAS. In order to do that, you click on plugins, you will see Plex over here. And once you click on install, which I have already done, it would now bring up the screen, which would start the installation. And once the installation is done, you need to add storage. So you go into jails, okay? And in this case, I go here and then click on add storage the next step click on source meaning where is the media content going to be so in this case it would be under flex movies I'm going to put all my movies within this folder and then destination is to create a kind of a content page into its repository so I'm going to just go ahead and select put it in share and then I hit OK. Storage successfully added. Now once this is done, I need to enable the plugin. So once I have the plugin enabled, I can go to the Plex server, like so. I have complete access of my Plex server. Plex server is set up on my FreeNAS box and now I'm accessing it via my Plex client on my desktop PC. Now remember you can access this via your uh, Android phone, your iOS, you can stream it to Chromecast to your TV and also watch it on any tablet PC as well. So multiple platforms. So if I go into movies, I have all my collection there. I also have some online channels that I have installed on the Plex server, which I commonly use. So that's about it. Till the next time guys, be safe.